Thank you so much. For those of you who don't know me or don't recognize my name, I am a full-time trader. I consider myself to be an average, everyday option trader. I trade professionally, but at the same time, it's not like I am managing millions and millions of dollars um, in a hedge fund or whatever. I'm just the everyday trader. And I happen to run across some patterns that no one else recognized, and that's what I'm going to show you today, that when you have a day like today where the market started down pre-market, went up, went down, went back up again, it's hard as heck to trade. And so some of the patterns that I've discovered will help you to negotiate and navigate through times such as this. Now, I have written a number of books, and of the list that is here, there are several that include the pattern that I'm going to show you today. <coughs> Excuse me. One is the P3 system, which uses um, daily charts. The price surge system, which focuses on long and short trades and uses 30 and 60 minute charts. And then there is also the latest one, which is the Q Merit Paycheck. And this is the I would like to focus on today, but at the same time I know that if I do nothing but talk about the cues, you all are going to get very bored. And so I want to be able to show how you can use the information that I'm going to be demonstrating today and use it on any stock equity, but also on any type of trading. I saw a question earlier, someone mentioned Forex. And these patterns will work on anything that can be charted. So let's kind of proceed here and um, we'll get, get started sharing the information. We all come to the stock market by different paths that some of us may have family involvement or education. It may be our profession. Then there's lots of us that come by way of financial need. And that's what Raleigh was explaining, that when that flood hit our family business, it wiped us out. It wiped out the building. It wiped out the inventory. We'd been open almost 25 years, and we just had everything wrapped up in that business, both my husband and I. And we were closed for a number of months not just replacing or trying to come up with um, the inventory to stock the store back again, but the building had to dry out. You had to get inspectors and pass all the mold and all of that um, regulations that they have before you can actually open again. And so in that interim period, I took a couple classes in option trading. And it worked out to be a great fit for me. And it just clicked. And anything that I didn't understand, or if I stumbled and I did not do well, I got would get a book or a resource or find out what I needed to know about the Greeks or the Delta or volatility or whatever it was. And eventually I started um, winning more trades than I lost. And along the way, I ended up discovering a couple patterns that no one else had seemed to know about. And it was complete by accident. So my personal goal at that time was to achieve financial independence and to get out of the spot that we were in. And then that desire grew to helping others to achieve, achieve the, the same goal. And so I started writing books. I, I initially wrote Option Trading in Your Spare Time, and then I started writing these strategy books. I also do newsletters, there's coaching, and there's advisory services. Now, the elements of this trading success is based on four main things. And what I would like to do today, and I hope you'll hang in there with me, is to cover each of these. And I'm going to spend a little bit of extra time on the weekly option expiration. So first off, we have the leverage that you achieve through options. And if you don't trade options, that may be something that you don't fully understand. And I'm going to cover this so that you can really get the gist of it. 
but then buying weekly option expirations and then trading the patterns that um, will show you that a stock is really getting ready to, to move in one direction or another. So exactly what is an option? Uh, there's two types. A call is one you would enter if you expect the equity to go up. It gives the buyer the right to require the grantor to sell the equity to them at an agreed upon price on exercise at agreed upon time. Put options are those that you would buy when you expect the price of an equity to go down. And this gives the buyer the right to require the grantor to buy the equity from them at an agreed upon price on exercise at agreed upon time. So we'll look here very quickly at the leverage that you can achieve through options that we're going to cover a trade here on the Q's. And the Q's is the ETF that um, has stocks from the NASDAQ. So on May 16th, the equity price was 86.50. And on May 30th, it rises to $91. That is a $4.50 price move or a 5.2% gain. On May 16th, the June second week option, the 88.50 strike premium cost was 78 cents per share. And a, a contract is a 100 shares of stock, so that's $78 per contract. On May 30th, the bid premium when you want to sell is $2.85 per share or $285. Now this is a 265% gain in those 11 trading days. So here we have a price move of 5.2% gain versus 265% gain. Where this really comes in and you get the gist of it is if we had bought 100 shares of the stock at um, the total investment would have been $8,650 and it earned $450 profit. Or that one contract that you paid $78 for covered 100 shares of stock and it earned $207. So for the same $8,000 investment, $86.50, you could have bought 111 option contracts for <clears throat> $977 in those same 11 trading days. Let me take a swallow of something here for a minute. I'm just getting over a cold, and I I'm, can hear the raspiness in my voice. So this gives you a clear idea of how the average everyday trader can invest in options, buy for what would be like a down payment on the stock price, earn a greater percentage, and if in the case that you were to invest the same amount that you would invest in the stock, the leverage you would see in the total gains that you would have are phenomenal. They can be life-changing. So here's a, a, a chart of the queues. Like I said, we're going to start here, but we're going to move on to uh, other equity. So this actually shows the movement that was at the um, start of the move. This is where we would have entered, and this is where we would have exited for those days. And what I'm going to show you is how you would know right here um, between May 15th and 16th, let me get a pen and just mark it here, right along in here, how would you know to get in there? That previous to this, there would have been other times that the, the price flattened out and then it dropped. So how did you know when to get in here? And that's, that's the... Um, pattern that I'm going to show you. All right. This is the second element. So we, we've covered options and the leverage. So let's talk about weekly options for a second. And there's several slides on this, but I want to 
cover it because weekly options are scary. They are scary to some people that time it decays and it is just, even though they've been around for a little while, it is a, still really a new concept. So here, weeklies are celebrating their, their fourth birthday, and they're still new enough that many traders just don't get the advantages. And I'd like to cover most of those. As traders, we're taught not only the value of time, but also to make sure we purchase extra time so that our trades have plenty of time to unfold and play out. But this isn't the thinking behind trading weekly options. With weeklies, the aspect of time works in reverse. We're not looking for extra time to allow our trade to play out, but providing we have the direction right, we're seeking protection against the market's fickle change in direction. We're using the short-term expiration time to our advantage. So one of the first assets of it is the fact that they're cost-effective. They're a fraction of the cost of monthly options. They are ex ex exceptionally flexible. That They are useful trade ve vehicles for a number of strategies for calls, put, spread, cover calls, etc. Long-term trades are subject to market changes. With short-term trades, you just trade what the market hands out. And since weeklies are new every week, a trader can pick and choose to enter at the exact moment the action is happening. There's no need to tie up capital waiting for an equity that's going through a pullback or a consolidation period. You can enjoy 52 expiration periods a year. Weeklies are available on indexes, stocks, ETFs. Matter of fact, now they're even putting out um, weekly options five weeks in advance they can list them. So you can plan well ahead of time and, and watch um, the option interest and the vol um, volume and so on. The exchanges offer new weeklies on companies that will attract attention each week. There's new weeklies that are listed. And that way the equities usually have higher volume. And once a month, all option equities become weekly. Weeklies are a short-term chartist dream. All you have to do is ask yourself is where will this equity be in a week or less? The short time frame allows for more accuracy. Weeklies can be used in conjunction with news announcements, earnings reports, FOMC meetings, etc. And weeklies remain more reasonably priced, even during periods of high volatility. Once the news is released, weeklies suffer less of that volatility crush that monthly options often are exposed to. The Greek weekly inherently offer higher delta than the monthlies do. Weeklies don't suffer from high theta. The time value is less of an issue. Cheaper prices mean you can purchase more contracts for the same total investment, which means there's more contracts that are helping you cover the trade cost. Additional Greek benefit is the gamma is explosive with so little time value. Quick price moves before the market can change directions compounds the benefits and the leverage of option trading. And as I mentioned, the exchanges have recently received permission to offer five consecutive weeks out, though you don't want to buy too far out or it would be just like buying a monthly option. So we've covered now two of the aspects of the strategy and the point that I'm trying to make here. And as I mentioned, my personal goal is to help um, people achieve financial independence through option trading, so that if options is not something that you've been exposed to, it might be something that you consider and want to look into. Utilizing weekly options and what I call the squeeze pattern, and then various other strategies help to support this goal, that the strategy books reveal all the steps that I use to trade on a daily basis. 
there's nothing left out, the secret key is, is not put aside and you have to buy something else, that all of the steps, all of the aspects of trading of the strategy are all there. There always is some losers, and the point is, is that you want to be able to cut those short, know when to, to exit, and that is an important aspect of the stages of the pattern. They will give you your entrance, your stop, when um, you can have a, a second chance to get in, a second entry, a time that you can relax and take a deep breath and know that it's going to go up, and then when to exit. I hear from traders every single day. I have um, emails and chat room and so on. I hear from them. and. These patterns work and they can be, like I said, life changing. That a couple times I've already mentioned that I consider myself to be just the, the everyday kind of trader. And so all of the strategy books and so on invest about 500, 600 per trade. And to me, that is like an average size account. If you are using good risk management and you have a $10,000 account, you're going to be trading somewhere in this amount, maybe up to 1000 But this is amounts that the everyday trader usually can manage. OK, so we have not just the, the option leverage, but now we have weekly option leverage. So let's look at another trade and uh, the point I want to make is this first sentence here that I have discovered that using these strategies that all you need is a move of two and a half to four percent in the equity price will equate to a double in the option premium. So here's another example that you purchase calls midday on August 8th for dollar thirty per share um, and this next little line is not right it would be a hundred and thirty per contract not a dollar thirty uh, for the September week 195 strike call and for those of you who don't understand um, or haven't been exposed to weekly options this is that they're written so that um, you have, it might not say week in between September and 1. It maybe will say September 1, 95 strike. Okay, the 1 is week 1, which means that, that it expires on the first Friday of the first week of September. I get lots of emails and, and traders are saying, well, how can it be that it expires on September 1st when you're closing it on the 5th or something like that? And so when there is a, a 1, 2, four, five, whatever, after the month, what it is saying is that it is a weekly option and it closes, expires on the Friday of that expiration week. So in this example, we bought five contracts for a total investment of $650. We sell at the end of the day on September 25th. The call contracts are now worth $4.21 or 2,105 total gain, um, total for a gain of 1455 and this is 224%. So the Q price when we entered the trade was approximately 94.50 and we sold at 99.50. So that's a $5 change in price. That's a hefty 5.3% increase in the stock price over those 12 days. Yet the option increased 224%. That is a huge difference. It's a huge difference not only in the amount of money that you would have to lay out if you were to purchase 100 shares of stock or of the equity, but it is also a huge percentage difference in the percentage gain. Okay, so this is the part that we were just discussing. And again, I'll 
get my pencil here and, and see. So what we've had a number of periods of time. If you look at this this chart, there was a, a kind of a consolidation period here. There was a consolidation where it flattened out. So here we are again that we've got this flat period. What is going to tell you that it's not going to drop more? What is going to give you the assurance to enter a trade here and know that this is when you want to, to get in? And this is the, the pattern that I'm going to show you. Well, I think I put this going the wrong way. There we go. So let's add some indicators to this, and, and I'm going to show you the, the pattern. The first indicator I'm going to add is the PPO. And the PPO is quite like the MACD. I like the formula that the PPO offers versus MACD. But if the, the charting service that you use does not have the PPO, you can use the MACD, the MACD. And for those of you who may not be familiar with either the MACD or the PPO, the main PPO line is the black line. The red line is a signal line to give you an indication of an actual cross up and down. And usually, price will follow the direction of the cross. So that here, the PPO crosses up, and you can see that price went up. Here, the PPO crossed down, and you can see what happened is the price crossed down. Again, here is another area where it crossed back up. It came down, and it touched the signal line a few times. And what we had here was these bounces back and forth. But price usually will follow the direction of the cross. So let's continue on. I have added the ADX indicator here. And it, again, shows strength or momentum. It does not show direction. So here, when we have this, this big drop, you can see the momentum build. And then when we have this flat period, it has kind of flattened out. So in this process of trading back a number of years ago, what I discovered is the fact that the PPO and the ADX, they have nothing to do with each other. They are totally different. indicators that they are separate, they're read separately. But what I discovered was the fact that when this happens, this area right here, see how these lines have come together? They're they're pinching. So my name for it is a squeeze. These lines have squeezed together. When these lines come together, price is getting ready to go up. And I'm going to show you more examples of this. And at this point in the webinar, you already will be able to pick this out. It's not some big technical whatever. You just will be able to spot it. There's another one on. Uh, uh, well, this is the same time frame of the, the cues. It's just showing you further. So here we have this flat area that we were discussing. and not knowing when it was going to go up, but look what happened. So you have this squeeze that, that took place. And this squeeze I discovered after doing newsletter after newsletter of giving people candidates of equities that were creating this pattern, I discovered that it goes through stages. It goes through like five stages. And this, again, is all information that's covered in the books and the DVDs. So let me move on. And you've got that kind of point. So here's this whole move that happened in the queue. Here, again, is the, the squeeze. We've added more days that we had gotten in here. And it, we went all the way up to the top. And this was that really, really nice move of, of $5 from 
uh, 9450 all the way up to 99. All right, here's Amgen. Like I said, I, I don't want to get hung up on the cues, but I'm going to cycle back to it at the end. Here again is this pattern. When the EPO line and the ADX line squeeze close together, there is going to be an explosive move. Here's um, Newmont Mining. Again, here's the, the lines have come together. And when they spread apart, there is going to be this explosive move. Home Depot, there's two. Now, there are squeezes, and sometimes they don't go as far as one would think, and then there's re-squeezes. So two points here that I'd like to make out. One is the fact that you might think that the tightness of the squeeze, so this one is much tighter here than this one is, that this one then somehow would be more ex explosive. And that may be the case, but it isn't necessarily the case, that sometimes you can have a very wide squeeze and um, have the line spread apart like they're doing here and have it be just this huge move that goes to the moon and back. And then other times you can have one get started and then have the PPO cross down where um, the squeeze in a sense failed but you had your signals that it, it was doing so and then it re-squeezes. Now there are confirmation signals. There's a, a couple other indicators that get added to this chart pattern that there's not really time to go in today that confirm your entry so that you maybe would have not entered this trade, even though it went up this little bit and um, started um, to get going the confirmation signals very well may have kept you out of that trade and you would have waited and um, then gotten into this one. And here's um, for solar. Again, we have the, the squeeze pattern coming together with these two indicators and up it goes. This is cell gene. I, I have no doubt that you now are be able to spot these as quickly as, as I do. And up went the price. Here's Johnson and Johnson. We have a drop, we have this flat period, you have the, the squeeze, you have the line spreading away from each other, and up it goes. Is Home Depot. There's a squeeze. This one lasted a few days. Look how it's kind of funny looking long and then the line spread apart. And there you are. Now, I haven't um, put it in these slides, and what we have talked about and what I have shown you here are all long pattern. There is an equally as clear pattern for short trade. Now on the, I'll, I'll flip back because here I've interrupted you. Um, this is the trade that I'm going to talk about in the in the next slide. So we're, we're would have gotten in here somewhere around the, the 24th and um, perhaps out on the 28th. Let's see. All right, again, I'll remind you about the 25 to 4% equity move often equates to a double when you're trading weekly options. So had we purchased mid-trading day um, on June 24th, we could have purchased for $0.75 cents a share or $75 a contract. Now, this is the monthly option, but the, um, it may not have offered weekly. The July um, 75 strike call 
And let's say we bought eight contracts for a total investment of $600. Again, this is an average trade for an everyday kind of person. And we sell at the end of the day on June 28th, four days later. The call contracts were worth $3.50 or $2,800 total for a gain of $2,200 or 367%. So again, we have this percent move in the price, which was $4 and, and change. And that was a great 6% increase in the stock's price over those um, few days and yet the option increased 367%. And you were able to get into the trade for a reasonable trade amount and exit with a, a beautiful profit. So I mentioned earlier, I think, that um, the pattern can be used on anything that can be charted. So it can appear on any type equity, that here we have the um, chart for the Dow, and here you have a squeeze, and price went up. So that it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a $30 stock or whatever. This charting pattern works for anything. So here, this is uh, advanced auto. This had a, a squeeze in the line spread apart, it went up, and then here we have this super tight squeeze, and when you add the confirmation signal to this and understand the stages that the, the squeeze pattern goes through, you will then be able to, like I said, know exactly when to enter, you will know exactly uh, what your stop is, you will know a second entry if for some reason the first one re-squeezed and or if you didn't get in on a timely basis on the first entry signal, you'll know exactly when to relax and take a deep breath and just kind of watch things unfold and you will know when to exit. Now, I actually kind of made this point, but I would like to, to stress it again, and I know I have a couple slides here that are going to point this out. Here we have three different squeezes kind of marked, and, and you can pick them out. Here is one that started spreading apart. Here's the second one that is spreading apart, and a third. And yet, in this case, price kind of flattened out, then it dropped, then it went up a little bit, flattened out. Here it flattened out again. So what you want to make sure is that you have the confirmation signals that tell you that this squeeze is not ready, that this squeeze is not ready, that this one's not ready. And eventually it, it certainly will be, and it, it may be this, this next one. But these confirmation signals will keep you out of a trade um, when it, it, it hasn't uh, developed quite enough. Here's another example of this. This was a, a really nice looking squeeze and it started spreading apart. It went up a little bit, flattened out uh, here. It dropped and now we have uh, another squeeze that has developed and it has just started. And yet it, too, has not really gone anywhere. So this is another example of the need to wait for the confirmation signals and not just uh, jump in headlong. Here's another one. And this is getting to be kind of redundant. But this actually, the point was that it, it went flat for a really, really long time before it um, actually started going up. So what you want to do is with the confirmation signals that you, again, would, would learn in the, the book and learn how to set up the charts exactly and learn the stages of the, the pattern, is you're going to be able to select the pattern moves that are really going to pay. So this first squeeze here, 
was moderately tight and it spread apart and price went up. And this was a, a $2 move or a 4% move. So in this particular case, that would have been an option, a weekly option that would have most likely have doubled plus some. Here we have another squeeze where the lines are spreading apart. And we had a um, much larger move that was a $4 move. Um, and this was actually 9%. So you can imagine what the uh, return would have been on a um, weekly option there over just the course of like five days. So I started with the cues and I'm kind of wrapping back around to the cues. And the reason for this is, is my latest book is about the cues. And the reason I want to, to point this out is the fact that probably the thing that most people become most overwhelmed with is the vast number of equities that are out there. So what if you just only traded one equity? And so here we have a, a, another great example of a squeeze. You have the lines that are spreading apart. You have um, the uh, a nice, nice advance over just a, a short period of time so that you would have been able to enter a, a weekly option and have been able to profit nicely from it. The actual trade numbers on this is um, had you entered on October 16th purchasing the October 5th week, and that again to clarify, on your specific trading platform, it might just say October 5 and then the 92 strike. And that means that it expires on the Friday of the fifth week of October. It's different than the monthlies. It has a different expiration date. It expires on the, the fifth Friday. So um, buying the 92 strike calls, um, they had 11 days until expiration. At the premium would have been 189 per share or 189 per contract. And let's say you purchase four contracts for a total investment of $756. Again, that's in that trading range that we were talking about. You sell on October 24th for a bid premium of $6.60 per share or $660 per contract. The total then is um, $26.40 for the four contracts, and that's a profit of $4.71 per share or $1,800 over those, for those four contracts, or a gain of $249 in those seven days. So again, that is a great example of how when you get the direction right and the squeeze helps you to get the direction right it shows you the explosive move up. The Q book shows you the short pattern as well. As a matter of fact, it covers eight different patterns. And so that you can just go in and out of um, trades on the Qs or can use that information on any other equity. So the goal here in my wealth building strategy focuses on the elements that we've discussed. One is the fact that you're using options as your trading vehicle. The next is the fact that you're using weekly options or front month options. You follow the strategy guidelines that are out, laid out in the book as to open interest and volume and the spread that you want to have between the bid and the ask so that you're selecting the option with the greatest chance of producing the leveraged results that you want. You're trading stocks that have large moves and you are understanding the squeeze patterns, whether it be long or short, um, with the confirming indicators so that you have a safe entry and you're kept out of the ones that are not, haven't built up the steam yet to, to really be explosive. And then you learn the stages that every squeeze goes through. And 
the stages apply to the, the long squeeze as well as the, the short squeeze. And uh, this again tells you the entry, second entry, when to hold, stop loss, and, and when to exit. So the books that, that utilize the squeeze pattern, and I covered this real quick in the very beginning, but I'll point it out again, is price surge system covers, um, uses weekly and front month options, both calls and puts, so it covers the long and the short strategy, using intraday charts of 30 and 60 minutes. And there's a book, there's a newsletter that comes with it that comes out twice a week giving you candidates that are creating the pattern. And there's an advisory. The P3 just covers long trades, and it uses daily charts. And it, too, is a book. It has a weekly newsletter once a week where the price surge system is twice a week. And then there's an advisory. And then there is the merit paycheck. And I'm so excited about this because it answers or helps so many people that say, I don't have time to um, go through hundreds of charts or looking at, at hundreds of um, potential candidates. I just need to know where to focus my interest. And so I have narrowed this down so that we are just trading the queues, which is the highest volume traded equity on the market. The liquidity is never a question. So the book is an advisory. It covers eight patterns, including the, the squeeze that we just talked about, the short squeeze pattern, as well as several others. And you are applying these to the time frame charts that you have time to trade and to deal with. Now, there is, um, I mentioned several books here. Here we have the Qs, we have the P, um, Price Search System, PSS, and we have the P3. Not everybody can trade and watch the market all day. So that some traders need to be able to look at the, the pattern after work in the evening. And the P3 system then would perhaps be the, the right system or the right strategy and book for them. Other people have more time during the day and want to be looking at lots of charts and making decisions and so on. So then the price third system would be the right book and newsletter set up for them. And then there's other people that, like I said, and this is what I hear most often, is I just don't have time. I don't have time to be flipping through charts one after another and, and watching things develop. Just tell me where to focus my attention. And this way, when you focus just on one equity, you're able to look at the daily chart, the 60-minute chart, 30, decide which time frame works for you, and just focus on that one equity. So we've kind of covered it all here. We have the leverage of options when you couple the pattern um, with the leverage of weekly options. It makes trading affordable and profitable for the everyday trader. That the information to be able to get more um, details is here. I have a, a website, wendykirkland.net. And um, I flipped the wrong way again, sorry. Um, trading Pub has a special offer. and. They're going to post this into the, the chat room. And if you will click on that, you will be able to get more details. As Raleigh said, that um, this is being recorded, and, and you'll receive it tomorrow. So you'll uh, have this information back up for it and be able to um, perhaps look through the charts more at your leisure. We covered it rather quickly. but. At the same time, I have no doubt that if you will set your charts up with the PPO on top and the ADX on the bottom, you will be able to spot that pattern and be able to 
you know, go back and back test. Look at hundreds of charts. You will see that when that happens and those lines spread apart, that price is going to explode up and pop up. I think maybe Raleigh has been gathering some of the questions since I have not actually paid attention to the chat. Um, are you there, Raleigh? I certainly am, <clears throat> and uh, Wendy, once again, thank you for that that great presentation. And I have been uh, recording the questions that they've come up, so I'll just start at the beginning here. John said, that, you know, this is pretty pretty basic question here, uh, but you know, once you've selected an option to buy or sell, how do you select the right strike price? Well, the book covers all of that. Most often, I buy at the money. Um, I don't um, advocate buying way out of the money, but you know sometimes it's it's very tempting to buy based on price. And but to me, because of the delta and all is very low on out of the money options, I usually stick with at the money or just in the money. That's that's my main take on that, I guess. All right, thank you for that. Brad then said, hey, Wendy, I get killed on commissions and spreads with cheap options, so please speak at some point about optimal trade size and stop placement. Well, again, um, the, for me, what I use, and I, I have set up a trading plan, and this is part of what's covered in the book, is the pattern itself to me dictates when I get out. and it is it happens at a place that really allows you to cut losses short and part of the rules as far as bid ask spread that I usually say that I don't want more than 30 cents spread between the options and sometimes there's ways to even cut that down smaller and we discuss that in the book so that if there is a loss it is a small one and it's, it's easy to digest and then when you have your big move that might happen a week later, then it more than makes up for it. So that's the ticket is really to, to cut losses short and to uh, be able to get out of a trade quickly if it's moving against you and, and wait then for the confirmation signals to give it a go again. Sure. Sure, I tell you what, there was, you know, as you were going through and you were talking about the uh, the PPO squeeze setup and things of that nature, um, <clears throat> several questions came in there and that, that, that are sort of related. One of them is when the squeeze happens, you know, price can go in, in either direction. So what are you looking for for a determination as to if the market is going to be going up or down once you see that squeeze occurring? Well, usually when, um, as I kind of demonstrated, when the lines start spreading apart, it can take a while for the squeeze to actually develop and build up the, I almost think of it as like a pressure cooker where it builds up the pressure that it could explode out, out the, the top off. But um, when those lines start spreading apart is an indication that it's ready to go up. That if the, the okay. squeeze just kind of lingers and develops and elongates or whatever, that it's, it's not ready. But when the, the lines start spreading, that is the signal it's, that it's, it really is, is starting to get some momentum behind it. And Sure. And, and you know what was interesting there, Wendy? Because it, it, it raised another question, which was, it appears that this is a pattern that's a really good indication of the market going up. Are, is there a similar indicator with the, the same kind of results, for example, that are predictive on the ability on the market going down? Exactly, there is. And I call that, that so that people, if they're reading through something, would recognize the terminology. I call that the P3 and a half. But there is okay. just as clear a pattern or when the market is going to go down to, to allow you to get into some short trades, whether it's, it's puts or um, spreads or whatever. 
Okay. Lots of questions about, you know, what platforms uh, the uh, these indicators are available on. We've got TradeStation users, Thinkorswim users, uh, MT4, things of that nature. As far as you're concerned, are there any limitations as to what platforms do or do not have the ability to uh, uh, to, to, to put these into, uh, indicators into play? I have so many traders that that um, use Thinkorswim that it's not one of their standard ones, but there's several traders that have developed whatever the technical thing so that if you Google it, or not Google, I'm sorry, search it within um, Thinkorswim, you will be able to find what you need to be able to do a, a PPO indicator. Um, okay. I use stock charts. Those were the charts that um, I had in my presentation today, and um, that's a standard indicator for them. Um, TradeStation, you can use, um, I believe they have PPO on it. And like I said, if for some reason you just are totally stuck that your um, brokerage doesn't offer it and all, you can use the MACD, and they are very, very close to, to being the same that you could um, line that up and, and that's a pretty standard indicator that most every platform would have. Sure. And along those lines there were some questions here also. I know this is can be a hard one to ask answer, Wendy, but I'll ask it anyway, which is, you know, what brokers do you work with? Actually I um for SEC restrictions really am not able to recommend one that I use several. I use um, think or swim, I use Options Express, but I really can't give a recommendation. There's so many variables that um, some traders want just the most basic pattern, um, platform, you know, no bells and whistles, and they want um, cheap entry and exit fees. And then other people want to use it for their charting service. They want to, you know, really be able to view their portfolio and so on in there. And so there's lots of reasons for um, a trader to make that determination for themselves. But there's, sure. there's lots of great online um, platforms where you are brokerages where you can be involved and, and do your own trading. Sure. So from that perspective, folks, hope you appreciate that she's not in a position, we're not in a position to recommend anybody, but there are several that she works with. Um, right. A question here, Ronald said, uh, he asked this earlier too, and he said, uh, he was asking the question, are, are, you, are, are you aware of whether the CCI indicator is available for Thinkorswim? I believe it is, um, and I often use the CCI. If it isn't, you can use the Williams percent R, and it gives you the same type of information. Okay. All right. And let me go through here. Look, there were several others that were here. Uh, one question was, uh, <clears throat> will your setups and the squeeze in particular, I think this is what this was associated with, uh, does it work in, in any time frame? It does. And that is one of the great things about the versatility of this pattern and and kind of the point that I was trying to make where I was saying that the um, P3 book covers daily trading ta trading daily charts, the P price third system, PSS trades 30 and 60 and, and so on, is the fact that this pattern will work for anyone who perhaps wants to trade um, day trades, say, and, and maybe they want to use um, five-minute charts or 15-minute charts. The pattern works exactly the same uh, in any time frame. For the trader that only has a, a short bit of time every month to focus, they maybe could apply the pattern to weekly charts. And the squeeze is going to unfold in exactly the same way on a weekly chart as it does on a 15-minute chart. It goes through the same Well, Wendy, phase. that's incredible then. So if, if I understand what you just said, I mean, on the one hand, you could be a futures trader, day trading, the e mini S&P, and you could go ahead and, and use this indicator, you know, to help determine if the market is going to be moving. And you could be looking at it on a weekly basis. 
That's exactly right. Now, there's times when uh, uh, an equity, um, whether it's the S&P or, or whatever, is, is not creating a squeeze and it's not creating a P3 and a half um, pattern and it's not in any portion of the stages. Maybe it's going through a, a consolidation period or, or whatever. But you certainly can spot the, the squeezes as they develop on any of the indices in any time frame and as they kind of um, begin to unfold and, and play out. So the, the answer is yes, you can use it to, to help you determine direction that often if I am say in a, a 60 minute trade, I love to see that there is a squeeze that has developed on the daily chart because I know then that my shorter term trade is going to play out for a longer period of time. No, that's if, great. If, if that makes sense. To what I'm no, to it, say, it, but. no, I think that's fascinating. And it just, once again, it just speaks to how, you know, uni universally this can be applied. Um, let's see, Chris says, um, for contract months or weeks, how many days or weeks would you use to give the option enough time? Well, it really depends on on what time period you're trading. And so, again, part of what I was trying to do with writing these various books is to give all the details that the trader needed for their particular amount of time that they have to devote to the market and to trading. So if you're um, trading daily and are interested in the P3, maybe you would be buying two or three months out and then selling perhaps 30 days before expiration to eliminate that escalating time decay. And if you're trading um, a 15-minute chart in our day trading, you might buy this weekly option where you just have five days because the trade is likely to develop within the next day or so and you're just quick in and out. Um, so it really depends on on the time frame that you're you're trading. Super. And just a couple more questions here while we've got you, uh, Wendy. One question here from Ronald. He says, Wendy, uh, can I get the books without the services, or is everything just bundled up together? You can get the book without the services. Um, I think the price is about the same. Meaning, if you you bought the book, it comes with um, a free three-month subscription to the newsletter. So in a sense, you might as well get the, the whole shebang because it's free. And then you just say that you're no longer interested in the newsletter portion if, if, if you're not interested in that. Um, sure. Otherwise, um, you can just buy the book and, and that's the end of it. Okay. Well, folks, uh, I want to take this opportunity to once again thank Wendy for, you know, just giving us a tremendous presentation on her approach to trading the options markets and the detail that she went into around um, this very unique pattern that she's been able to discover and she shared with us on how to, uh, you know, to use the PPO indicator, if you will, and the squeeze to help identify uh, uh, consistently movements in the market, whether they're movements up or down. And she's put this all together in a nice special offer that she's made available for those of us that are here at the webinar. And I encourage everybody to go ahead and click on that link and research what she's put together. Uh, I think she's done a great job of just leveling with us on her experience and sharing the kind of results. And I, and I, and I appreciate, you know, Wendy, you take somewhat of a humble approach, but you're, you, what you're saying is you're no different than the rest of us. You're just, you know, uh, and when I, when I was thinking back on your bio and how you got into options trading, you're somebody I think we can clearly identify uh, with, and you've been able to, you know, to come up with a successful approach to taking options. You obviously have a commitment to sharing your education with others that are looking for financial independence, and I think we certainly do appreciate that. So once again, thank you so much for your time in preparing and delivering this presentation to our group today. So with You're that, welcome, folks, this brings our session.
go ahead. I, I, I thank and you so for the invitation, and it was my pleasure to, to be here. Well, once again, we were delighted to have you. And as I <clears throat> mentioned earlier, this session has been recorded, folks. And we'll go ahead and we'll edit and we'll render this. And we'll have it sent out to everybody uh, no later than tomorrow afternoon. So you'll have uh, ample opportunity to re-review this and uh, take full advantage of the excellent information that Wendy has shared.